Welcome everybody. You know who I am again. Now, I always like to come back and I do product testing and the product testing videos are all there uh, in a playlist. Now, a good while ago, and I know you're probably watching this um, as of August 2023, I tested, it's in that playlist there, I tested some Caprol PU Gloss end of May. 29th of May and I also then tested um, some Technos Futura Aqua 90 again end of May they're all done the actual testing was done within a few days of each other uh, the video probably went out in June time June of 2023 it doesn't matter when you're watching this if you're watching this in the future or you know what I mean it, it's still relevant it's the time scale we're looking at now I put that Futura gloss on and I was really impressed with the gloss level. Now, I was really impressed with that gloss level because, well, we know, we're an undercoat and two top coats. We did that for both of them, that's fine. Now, the gloss levels with water-based paints, the more gloss level you've got, you find that there's an alkyd element to it. Now, you're gonna say, what's an alkyd element? If you, if you know about painting and decorating, you've been around a while, if I say to you, you've got an alkyd gloss, you'd look at it and I'm bracketing it as it's an oil gloss. Now, some of these waterborne paints that are coming through, I've got very good gloss levels, but there is an element of alkidness, if that's a word, alkidness to them. Now, Benjamin Moore, Advance, that's that's got an alkyd element to it. That will, you probably, you might have seen that review on that one that I've done, or it might be in the future for you, but that's got an element of oil to it. It also means that you struggle washing your brushes out. And you know about, I'll link to the brush killer, the Jono's brush killer. And I've not got one here, but no, I've not got tin. The Jono's brush killer, cracking gloss. You'd be hard pushed to know whether it was an oil or not. Kills your brushes, especially brush cleaning products are needed. Nightmare, it's supposed to be a water-based product. I'm coming back to this. Both water-based, but one's got the alkyl element and one hasn't. Now, within a couple of days of me doing these at the end of May, I could see that that Futura te from Technos was starting to go a little bit yellow. The gloss level, you can probably just see it. The gloss level is, I'll say, exceptional. For a water-based paint, it's really, really good. It is a very good gloss it's flowed out nicely the brush i used i've tried to keep them consistent it's the nor heritage for a lot of these testings really nice or sometimes use arrowworthy monarchs bits and pieces like that the gloss level the flow out is really good what i'm not liking is how it yellowed off the caprol the pu gloss the gloss level was slightly lower, only a fraction, only a fraction lower, but that is still white. Now I'm gonna bring the door in so I don't move the camera and we'll just see if you can just see it on here. You can see the ring light. Yeah, you can just see the divide, oh sorry, the dividing line tape there. This is whiter than that, but the gloss level, oh, you can see it. Can we see the gloss level has a little bit more sheen to it or shine stroke gloss. So my question for the day, cause this isn't going to be a long video is what do you, what do you compromise on? What do you compromise on? Do you go for the higher gloss level with the Technos? And it was a nice paint to apply. I had no problem applying it. And I've said before in previous videos, um, just temperature dependent. If you're warm, you're gonna struggle. If you've got a nice ambient temperature, you apply it nicely. These paints are straight out the tin. I'm not putting anything in them, not thinning them down. I've tested them as they came out the tin to see what they're like. Some people will probably shout and comment and say, put a splash of this in it, put a splash of that in it. If you're a DIY, if you're an amateur, if you're, new, oh, let's call you a new age painter that's just coming into the scene of painting and decorating, you've not been to college, you're still a bit wet behind the ears and you're learning your paints and your products, or 
you have been to college, you have got your City and Gills and your MVQs, you've had your apprenticeships, but you've been a traditionalist of keeping with oil-based paints and you're actually looking at moving over to water-based. I've said in previous videos, I'm jumping about, I've said in previous videos that there are water-based paints out there that the feel and application wise, you would think you were putting actually an oil-based on. And a lot of people have thought about water paste of years gone by and said it's like putting a, a posh vinyl silk on. And they're not what you think they are going to be. There are paints out there that you'd be hard pushed to look at. Once they're dried and cured, you go, is that water-based or is it oil-based? Now, I did a video there probably weeks ago about the Dulux Heritage. I'm going a bit of a downer on the Dulux products. I'll say it with clenched teeth. But the Dulux Heritage range of paints, the eggshells, are a very nice paint. Don't get me wrong, it's a lovely paint. But there are stuff out there that you get what you pay for. Cheap is cheap and you would feel like you're putting a cheap paint on. It is a case if you spend a little bit more you get a nicer water-based paint. But I'm gonna ask you, do you compromise on a better gloss level on a water-based paint, knowing that it might yellow slightly? And yellowing happens when you're in a darkened environment or you've had a wardrobe up against skirting boards or a door or something. You've hung um, a dressing, best one is dressing gown on the back of a, a bathroom door. You, um, you know what I mean? And it leaves, where it can't get natural light, it yellows off. Now. Possibly, I get this outside and leave it for a few days in natural light, the, it will start bleaching out and that yellowing will go because that's what happens with a traditional oil-based paint, that it can start coming back to more of a whiter finish. But do you do the compromise of going for a better gloss level? Or, like I've done, because I've done recent jobs where I've used PU gloss because it's a nice gloss finish, it applies nicely and it doesn't yellow. Price-wise, there's not much in it. And people go on about prices of paints. When you're looking, and I'm t I talk about a domestic painter and decorator in one room and you're pricing one room at a time, the chances are, if you're, you've just got a door, a frame, it's probably a UPVC window and you've got a windowsill that needs painting and a bit of skirting in an ordinary Mr. and Mrs. Smith's, not picking anybody out, Mr. and Mrs. Smith's bedroom lounge, you've not got a lot of paint to be used on woodwork and yet a litre, a couple of litres is the maximum you're going to use. Does it matter if it's an expensive paint or not if you're only using a few litres because you're priced for the job. Don't price your materials separately, price for the job and include your... I'm telling you, Phil, uh, the businessman of the year. Yeah. Price, price your job, your materials and your labour all in one. Give a complete price. Give yourself enough time to do it. Don't don't say, oh, I can do it in a day, but actually you need a day and a half and you lost out on it. If you think you need a day and a half, you charge for two days, don't you? Gives you that cushion. But what I'm trying to say is, you can lose your price of your paints in with your materials, stroke, your labor, in the total price of your job. So does paint quantity really matter if you're only looking at 20, 30 quids difference on the bill? If it's 50 quid on a bill, if it's a maximum of 100 quid on a bill, does it really matter? But the question being is, what do you think to the hybrids that go a little bit yellow compared to more the acrylic, proper acrylic based paints? I want you to tell me what water-based paints you're using. Are you liking the Bed X? Are you liking the Benjamin Moore? Scuff X as a, an eggshell satin finish is lovely. 108 pounds for just under four liters. It's a US gallon. But that paint is beautiful. It can be recoated in 20 to an hour, 20 minutes to an hour, and the finishes on a par with an oil-based eggshell. Argue the case with me, please tell me. Thanks for listening. It was only a 10 minute video of, what do you think to these? One's gone yellow, one hasn't. We know the reason why. What's your views? See you on the next one.